Hello, beautiful world. This is Faris Al Hajri, PhD AM here in Hakwa Awareness. This topic is very important. Solicit. Why solicit? Without your support, nothing will be done. We are doing our best and we're still doing our best. But I, I said in one of my quotes, I never be the best, but I always do my best to be the best. This is about the, a new evolution of healthcare system. And we need your support. We need the world support. We need community support. We need, we solicit the entire world, the society for this. And why? Why today we announce this? We plea. Let's go back to in time. Back to history. How did I discover this? Something simple with this temperature carries a lot of hidden mysteries. Back to history of my mother. When I was a child from 1964 to 1991, my mother, she underwent for 35 years a, a 10 surgical operations in her stomach. You can imagine that. Due to that reason, since I was a child, we were split in two, all of us, family of eight, five sisters and three brothers. We were divided to be raised by our parents, by our, our uncles. And for the reason, because our mother, every two to three years, she has to be readmitted in the hospital undergoing surgery. And it will take her about six months to recover. By the time she recovers, she just stay a few months again less than a year or sometime maximum two years, again, she will be readmitted. For that reason, that has started to cause kind of a brainstorming. These 10 surgical surgeries in her stomach, that seven of them were done in Africa. That's where I used to, I was born and that's where I lived till I was 16 years old or 15. Then I moved to Egypt to study, then to Oman, and then I worked and I, continue my study in college, and then today I'm here in the United States. During that time, till the time she passed away in 1991, among the 10 surgical operations, which seven in Africa, three in UK, you know, United Kingdom, and these three chemotherapies that were done in UK is after she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. So the moment she underwent a chemo, the first chemotherapy, and came back to Oman, we thought that, that she's going to be fine because she underwent chemotherapy. But again, it was just a prolonged. Within less than a year, it metastasized again. So she has to be sent back to UK to go for another surgery, chemotherapy. But the second chemotherapy didn't do anything. Then she has to be brought back for the third Time. You can imagine three chemotherapies in the United Kingdom. That was not enough to secure, to give her the body what was craving for, the suffering of 35 years that she suffered a lot. For me, and for any person when you go through this experiment, through incident like this, it's a shocking, a shocking wave that can affect your entire even psychological impact, your behavior and everything. So due to that, in my childhood, I am looking at the stars and I have to wish. My wish is to heal my mother when I grow older. I never knew the stars will respond. The universe, you call. Some they say God, some they say universe, some they say the stars. But for me as a child, I knew one thing, I'm looking at the stars. And I say, my wish when I grow older is to discover something that can heal my mother and heal the world without any side effect. I never expect that will, the universe will listen and will respond it. I never expect that. But from that 
painful moment of childhood that I went due to the absence of being raised by my own parents, including all our divided families. Though we have a good treatment by our uncles, but we miss the, 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 the feeling of the parents, to be raised by parents. That, to me, it results to boomerang effects. Let me go through quickly. I know you can Google that to see what is the meaning of boomerang. It's, in psychology, it's an attempt to change a person's attitude, often produce a strong opposing response. So you try to do something, but it goes the, uh, the opposite. So to me, the boomerang effect was due to that <laughs> childhood process I went through. I started to, because of my mother undergoing surgeries, I started to face chronic inferiority complex. Chronic inferiority complex. If you look at my teeth, they're not joined because I used to suck my thumb from my childhood as to release myself from the seeking the parental love that my, of my own parents, father and mother. So that inferiority complex that I went through in my childhood, I don't want to be in public. I don't want to be mingled with others. But when I grew older, when I started to work, I became workaholic. I worked 14 hours, 12 hours every single day. I reached twice, 23 hours when I was working as a quantity surveyor engineer, consulting, consult, I mean, a quantity surveyor, which is a part of the, of, of, uh, the cost consultant in the Ministry of Housing in Oman, the government. When I worked, I became workaholic, and twice I had to work for 23 hours nonstop because I felt that the paper became my best friend. And the other issue is that I started to have a complexity of pharmacophobia. I fear medication. I fear because when I get sick, when I fall sick, when I go to meet my physician, the first thing, if we, we know, you know that, everybody knows that, prescription drug. That prescription, prescription drug, to me, it results to pharmacophobia. Why? Because it results me back to remember my mother. Why did, did the medication, the drugs, save the life of my mother? Will it save my life? For 35 years, 10 surgical operations, 35 years of suffering, I knew that's going to be happening to me. So I had that kind of a phobia. Fear, worry of this medication. So, no solution. What should I do? And due to visit to my physician and they do not find the root cause why am i falling sick they would just prescribe the drug that became a big bang to me a personal big bang that happened that occurred after the aftermath why the big bang was the symptoms that i was undergoing different symptoms allergy rhinitis I'm, of course, when I have the allergy rhinitis, I go to my doctor, he will prescribe me what? Drug. Then it went. From that, it moved because the, the drugs, they do not solve the root cause. So it, I, be, I started to have asthma attack. I collapsed twice. I, lose, I lost conscious twice. So that was another big bang to me. Then going to the, my physician again to check what's the reason. Of course, they will prescribe me drug. My physician, he's doing right. He's doing his job because that's a solution. That's the honest ultimate solution. And they tell me, if you do not take your promethazine, your antihistamine, your inhaler, you will have, you may have a stroke. You need to keep your medication. This is a chronic ailment that's going to be there with you throughout your life. Throughout your life. So I was diagnosed with a series of migraine. Terrible headache for prolonged for one week, nonstop. Again, medication, prescription drugs. It went to lumbago because of long sitting, workaholic. So what happened to my life with all these complications? I started to lose hope. 
I started to feel I'm dying slowly. It reminisced the past. It reminded me about my mother. Then I started to think about my kids. Then I started to say, I won't let this to happen to me. I won't let my life to be destroyed, to live with these so-called diseases, the chronic complications. So what happened to that? I have to look for alternative. I say, okay, no to drug. This would just kill me because it didn't do anything to my mother and it didn't do anything to myself, as you could see. So solution was to try to find an alternative, natural, which is friendly to our body. So uh, by that time, I'm not taking any cold drinks because I, there was a research about cold drink, solidify the fat deposit and says the cause of cancer, cause of all these complications. I mean, all these complications. So I already many years, I'm not taking cold water. So that everything changed. When I was that time, I was found like a subconscious driving me to the kitchen. And I remember that time we ate the spaghetti. So there's a leftover, some fat deposit on the dishes. So I said, okay, let me wash the dishes. Then I, will take, I took the dishes, I pour cold water. Of course, you know that, everybody knows that. Any food deposit that has oil deposit, any oil deposit, when you pour cold water, what happened? It hardened. It looked like a rubber. So I use other dishes with leftover food with some oil deposit, and I pour cold, hot water. I did the opposite. Then I found it cleans completely without using soap, detergent, and become completely brightened, flashing. And I say, wow. So this is the reason why I have not been taking cold water for many years. So now I need to shift. Instead of taking warm water that I've been taking for a couple of, maybe 10 years or 11 years, I never take cold water. I avoid it completely. But that was not enough, the warm water. So I shifted to hot water and I made the decision immediately, no more medication. That was my personal decision. And I went to my physician and said, look, from today you will never see my face. I'm not going to take the prescription drug. And that hospital was, my wife was working as a nurse, a registered nurse, in police hospital in Oman, Royal Oman Police Hospital. And my physician was Dr. Bhattacharji, senior consultant. I told Dr. Bhattacharji, I made a decision, I'm not going to take any prescription drug from today. He said, that's going to, it's so risky to you. I say, that's my decision. I started to take hot water. He looked at me, he, like, it's so worried what I'm talking, you know, but that was my decision. When I started to take hot water, I shifted the temperature. I followed the water therapy, but instead of the warm water, I shifted to hot water. My health started to change. My house is near the beach. I can run, I can do exercise, I can jog without having wheeziness, without having asthma attack, without having, without having I mean, my health was changing from time to time. And due to that, I started the experimentation in August 2007 by just using the cold water and versus hot water on the dish with the leftover food deposit, all the oil, the food the stuff on the plates. Just less than a year, I mean, within a year, August 2008, I went back to my physician. I said, I need to have a full medical checkup. 63 medical checkup. I have a print of that. Red blood cells, red blood cells, liver, everything, hemoglobin, everything. And I was found completely asymptomatic, completely like a newly born, perfect health. So they say, this is the first time to see your case. And we, know, we knew that you're not taking any medication. With just only hot water, we will discuss this, we'll bring, we'll bring this report, we'll discuss to the medical committee. As you could see here, this is the medical committee of the Royal Oman Police Hospital, a prominent hospital in Oman, government hospital, police hospital, and they issue a certificate signed by the senior consultant and the, 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 the head of the medical committee, so the entire medical committee approved that with only taking eight glasses of hot water daily without medication, this is what happened. I was found asymptomatic. That was the big bang to me. That was a big shift 
to me for what I've been searching. That was the result. The response of the universal intelligence responded to my plea for my childhood. So from that, everything changed. So what do I need to do? And remember about my two dreams, to heal my mother and heal the world. So that was a big boom to me to move one step forward. And that one step, I started to conduct lectures. Shifting from engineering to holistic. And I don't have enough information. I have to prepare myself. Because people call me. When I start to share my story and then I share to others, my wife and, every, and everybody who believe, use, implement this hot water therapy, they come to me and say, hey, I was diabetes. I'm fine. They told me I'm no longer diabetes. I, was, I have my hypertension gone. I, have, I mean, different stories. So I started to conduct lectures. Till today, for 13 years since I started, actually I started that approximately 2010. So we're talking about 10 years of this development, but the story of Discover was 2007. I ended up to have 60 lectures in different countries worldwide, including the United States. Universities, it covered, I mean, I covered all these universities, Schools, colleges, health organizations, companies, churches, and mosques. So I tried to cover all sectors of the society. Not only that, I wanted to be in the media because media call me because people talk, more especially in the Middle East when I came from Oman. So I started to be invited with the media, and Till today, I covered. I was covered in 92 media interview for th in these 10 years of since I started. So that covered TV interviews, newspapers, radio interviews, press releases, and magazines. 92 globally: United States, UK, Malaysia, Philippines, India. I mean, different parts of the corners of the world. That was a good shift for me to feel where am I standing, and to see how is the world responding to this. Uh, new discovery, I could say. I decided to also to attend international conferences as a speaker, moderator, chairperson in one of the sessions, uh, poster judges, uh, committee uh, member, I mean, uh, uh, organizing committee member. All these gave me an experience. And these international conferences in the UK, I mean, as you could see here, in Melbourne, Australia, San Diego, California, Kolkata in India, Abu Dhabi, UAE, United Arab Emirates, Sharjah, UAE, Dubai, UAE, Manila, Philippines. All those are the countries that I conducted direct speeches to those international conferences. So that gave me another good shift, another good experience. All this on a personal effort personal, at my own expenses, at my own will. Then I had to, when I shoot two books at the beginning, in 2012, then I wanted to have my books exposed in this international book fair. So I covered Frankfurt, Germany, international book fair, London, New York, and that's the biggest, the largest book fair in the world. I covered Beijing in China, Muscat, Oman, the capital, Abu Dhabi, UAE, and Doha, Qatar. Not only that, so I wanted to take more step. I recently issued a third book. So these are the two books that I issued first, The Miracle and Wonders of Treatment from Hot Water, published by Otho House, all these three books. The other book is The Values of Well-Being and the Secrets for Better Living Theories. About well-being, it means motivational, caught, and recently, the coronavirus, the title, coronavirus, COVID-19, outbreak and the lost treasure. And why? Because, I'll come to this, this was the result that what we received from three clinical trials were conducted in rats. And that started with the, that professor. She had a problem, complication with the vitamin D. And when I, I was helping her with the hot water therapy, then she, her vitamin D increased from eight nanograms per milligram, something like that, to 
25. And I, there's a session I talk about that. So as a gift, she was so excited. She asked permission for me and she gave me credit to that. She did three clinical trials in three consecutive years because it was done for this. And she's teaching master and PhD students in that university. And she's the director of research in addition being a professor with 23 years of experience, PhD and PhD. So what she did, she, she, uh, she did with her, uh, in her own lab using rats. And these three clinical trials were done in 2017, 18, and 2019. And the results, we have all of them, the details of these clinical trials, they were completely positive, optimistic, with a great result on the effect of hot water with all these complications, uh, CVD, cardiovascular diseases, uh, cholesterol, uh, uh, hypertension, uh, not, not hypertension, cholesterol, and also LDL, the low cholesterol, the, the, the bad cholesterol, HDL, the good cholesterol, and so on. So all these results, clinical trials, using hot water in rats, became to us a credit added, all this to what has been, uh, has been done for the last 13 years since we discovered this therapy in 2007 until today as we